Hi everybody, welcome to Sky Ting Live or Sky Ting TV, wherever you're tuning in from. Um, we are here at our Chinatown studio. We're so happy to be here. I'm Chrissy, that's Chloe. We're gonna guide you through a practice today, 45 minutes, and this class is sponsored by The New Co as part of our series with The New Co. Um, today's class, we're going to focus on clearing mind fog and centering ourselves and feeling more focused. Um, the Nuco has a product that's really cool with lion's mane and it's caffeine free and it helps with focus and memory and you should try it. I think we give you a discount if you sign up for our newsletter. Um, we hope you're well. This class is free, but if you have the means, we're trying to shed light on this organization that helps black trans people. Um, and the info is on our website. So if you have the means, you can donate there. But let's get started. You might want to grab a couch cushion today. We have bolsters. If you have a yoga bolster, grab that. You might want a block or two blocks if you have that. Grab whatever you have and we'll get started. We'll do a flow, we'll do some breath work, and we'll end with meditation. So a full rounded class in 45 minutes. We gotta start. Let's begin in child's pose. So how these classes go is I'll teach for half and then I'll pass it to Chloe. Chloe will teach for half so you get double duty today. And you just follow along. Keep one piece of your attention on my cues and Chloe's cues. Keep one piece of your attention on your breath and then one piece on your physical posture. So here you can close your eyes, just let the forehead touch the floor. That's really grounding and soothing for the nervous system. Breathing in and breathing out. Listening to your own breath. The breath is such an uh, amazing thing that we can anchor into in any given moment. It's like one of the most seminal cues in yoga and meditation because it's always there. It's always something we can focus on to bring us into present moment. Come forward onto your hands and knees. And let's do a few cats and cows just warming up the spine as we do. You can flip your wrist to begin if you like to flip your wrist backwards. That's what I like to do. Inhale, arch your back, look up towards the ceiling. Exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin, puff up your back, and then keep going. Inhale, you arch, and exhale, you round. And then start to play with your breath. So go faster with your breath, go faster with the movement or you can keep it nice and slow, but I wanna keep your breath and your movement connected. So if you're going fast with your body, that means you're pumping the breath fast as well. Keep going and let's do another five or so. Four, three, two, one. Flip your hands the normal way around. And then sit on your heels. If that's not comfortable for your knees, go ahead and sit up on a block. Take your hands to your kneecaps we're going to do cats and cows, but here sitting on our feet. So inhale, you're going to arch. Exhale, you're going to round. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. And then get a rhythm that feels good. If you can't grab your knees, just put your hands on your thighs or grab your heels. And really start to move your lower body. So we want to get the lower body sort of fired up. The lower body is like the pilot light of your house and whenever you want to make your house warm you start in the basement tinker around like the pilot light and then heat rises same thing in your body good stop for a moment and start to make some circles turning your wheels starting to stir your pot another classic sky ting katona thing that we do all the time stop and go the other way because it's effective. Brushing your teeth, we do it all the time because it works. Okay, come back to center, shift forward onto all fours, tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog, press the floor away, bend your knees a little bit, stick your butt way, way up towards the ceiling, rotate your armpits in towards your heart, press through the knuckle pads of the palms, take a huge breath in, open the mouth, sigh it out, exhale. Good, from here, walk your feet forward to your hands, step, 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 baby steps up to the top of the mat. 
Separate your feet hips distance. You know that's two fist distances apart, or maybe you don't, but now you do. Measure that out, bend your knees, grab opposite elbows, drop your head, and just let your torso hang down over your legs. You can sway, you can shake out the head, you can do whatever you want. You can rock forward and back. Just let this first hang feel good. Let your back start to release. Let all the muscles relax. And then take your fingertips down to the floor in front of you. Lengthen your waist, look forward. Try to pull your chest forward as you pull the tailbone back. So you're lengthening your spine a lot. Put a little bend in your knees. Find your feet, ground them down into the floor. Take your hands to your hips, elbows up, long spine, navel in. Press the tailbone down as you stand all the way up. And reach the arms up. Hook your thumbs, grow tall. Lift your right heel, lean to the right, look underneath the left armpit, big side body stretch, opening up this left rib cage. Come back up, switch your heels, switch your hook of the thumbs, lift up, lean to the left, look underneath the right armpit. Good, and then come back up to center. One more time, let's fold forward over the legs, Uttanasana, drop your head. So when we're thinking about mental clarity, it's really nice to get blood moving to the brain. That helps in a non-caffeinated way. It's like drinking coffee and, you know, getting some new oxygen, blood, and all that good stuff to the part of us that uses the most amount of energy, our brains. Take your hands into fists. We're just going to do this, like, chi movement where you're pounding the hips the outsides of the legs, the calves, the feet, and pretty much wherever feels good. There's no right or wrong here. But you just want to get the things moving and wake your tissue up a little bit. So if you wanted to ever get my attention and you, you did this to me, I would, I'd be like a little more alert. That's what we're doing with our bodies. Okay, release that. Drop your arms, drop your head, and then this time really slowly roll up through the spine, joint by joint, feeling each part of the back stack on top of each other. And then once you arrive in Tadasana, you can stand up tall, bring the feet together. We're going to do a few syncopated sun salutations and time our movement with the breath. So if you know sun sounds, we're going to measure it out really nicely. And if you don't, just follow along. So standing in Tadasana, spreading the toes out, looking straight ahead. Feel like your arms are soaking wet. The fingertips drift down towards the floor. Shoulder blades down your back. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And if you know Ujjayi breath, engage Ujjayi breath, rubbing through the back of the throat as you breathe in. Sounds like the ocean. And breathe out. And then here we go. Four counts for every movement. Breathing in, reach the arms up. Two, three, four. Fold forward. Two, three, four. Half lift. Two, three, four. Step to plank. Bend the elbows or all the way down onto your belly. Good. Cobra pose for four counts. Two, three, four, and then downward facing dog. Three, four. Stay here. Breathing in. Two, three, four. Breathing out. Two, three, four. Again, in. Let your mind rest on the breath. Breathing out. Let's do one more. Breathing in. Two, three, four. Four, breathing out, bend your knees, look forward, step or jump on empty, and then inhale, look forward. Three, four, exhale, fold. Two, three, four, inhale, rise, reach the arms, looking up, and Tadasana. Two, three, just like that again. Breathing in, sweeping up, looking up, folding forward. Two, three, Four, halfway lift, two, three, four. This time, chaturanga if you want, step or jump, or all the way down. Up dog or cobra, two, three, four, and down dog, two, three. Stay here, breathing in for four, or breathing out. 
Breathing in, little sound with your breath. Breathing out. One more, in. And out, bend your knees, look forward and jump. Breathing in, look forward. Three, four, breathing out and fold. Three, four, rising up. Two, three, four, and arms down. I'm gonna give you one more for you. I'm not gonna talk much. You can follow Chloe if you need. Breathing in and out, bend your knees, look forward and jump. Up, two, three, four, and Tadasana, two. Very good, you guys. Bend your knees, sit back, chair pose, Uttasana. Take a moment here, sitting back, reaching the arms up, feeling the work and power of your legs. And then exhale, bend your knees, sweep the arms behind your back, interlace your hands and fold forward, face down towards your shins, tailbone lifts up towards the sky. Take your fingertips down to the floor, lengthen your spine, look forward, and then step, step, or hop back, downward facing dog, no chaturanga this time. Hips are high. Take a moment in your down dog, see where you've been, notice how nice it feels to hold a pose after moving through uh, syncopated flow. Let's take the hands back for a little bit of a walk, maybe one palm print back, maybe two. Bend your knees even more, stick your butt up even higher towards the ceiling, and then take your left hand and grab around for your right heel, and then turn your torso and look underneath this right armpit. Turn, 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 lengthen your waist, twist your spine. You can bend your left knee into the left armpit. That's nice to do, fitting the body together. Eventually all these poses kind of just fit one into the next. Switch sides, left hand down, right hand grabs your left heel, and then turn and look underneath this left armpit. Right kneecap can bend into the right armpit as you slide the left heel closer to the floor. Good, breathing, turning, twisting, staying focused. Good, and then both hands down to the floor. Walk forward to a plank pose, top of a push-up. Shoulders stack over the wrists. When you're weight-bearing in the arms, it's really good for the bones. The bones start to strengthen here. Let's take the right hand for a flip backwards and start to stir up your right wrist around in a circle. Keep looking forward, keep the legs strong. You can do this on the knees if it's too much in plank. Go the other way. I haven't done this in a while, it's kind of hard. Flip the right hand the normal way, flip the left hand backwards, same thing. Stir it up, use the balls of the feet. Looking out, good, go the other way. And flip downward facing dog. Right leg lifts up and back as you breathe in. Step the right foot forward to a lunge. Spin the back foot down 45 degrees. Let's come into triangle pose using a block. Outside of the right ankle, straighten your legs. Reach the left arm up, look up. So triangle pose, take a really long stance with your legs. Press into your feet, turn the body, look up to the top hand and get light on the bottom shoulder. Rotate your chest, pull the outer right hip back towards your left heel. So all these little alignment cues keeps the body safe and it also helps keep the mind engaged. When you're doing yoga, you don't want to do yoga mindless, brainless, and just on autopilot. The goal is to wake up, to stay as conscious as possible. 
Press down through your feet. Inhale, stand all the way up. Arms stay long, out to a T. Right toes turn in, left toes turn to the back of your mat, whichever way you're facing. Bend your left knee 90 degrees, warrior two. If you need to, take a little bit of a longer stance. Make sure the front knee is stacked over the front heel. You reach through the fingertips. Look beyond the left middle finger. Stay here, maybe bending a little deeper, staying focused, staying invested in the shape. So beautiful, Chloe. Let's take one more deep breath in. And exhale out. Straighten your legs, hands to your hips, turn the toes parallel. Press the tailbone down, lift your chest up, squeeze the elbows in, and then exhale, fold forward over your legs. Prasarina Padatanasana. And this is, we do this pose all the time. It's like my favorite pose to do in yoga. You can do so much here with your hands. You can take your hands like Chloe's. This is a classic shape. You can walk your fingertips forward. You can put your head on a block or the floor. And you're staying here for a few more breaths. Again, letting the blood move towards the brain, giving your brain a nice little jolt of, of fresh, good stuff <laughs> in our bodies. We always say this, but in yoga, you want to keep things moving. You want to keep everything hydrated and flowing. In nature, things that are stagnant get diseased and infected. Same thing in your body. The things that stay stagnant, your joints, your muscles, your thoughts, that's what um, we, we worry about. That's what, what, we, uh, what gets infected. Let's take one more breath, wherever you are. Good, and then walk your hands back underneath you. Move any props out of your way. Look forward, lengthen, and then go ahead and take your hands for a stroll forward as you pivot on the feet into a low lunge. Looking forward, get your legs super strong, reach the arms up and come into a high lunge. Arms next to the ears. So really stable legs here. Front knees bent to 90, hands to a prayer. We're gonna twist to the right, hook the left elbow past your right knee. And if this is too much, take your back knee down. If you're pregnant, don't twist this way, twist the opposite way so you're not compressing your abdomen. If you're in the full expression of the pose like Chloe, feel free to lift your top arm up and the bottom arm down and you just like fly away like a little airplane. Wouldn't it be nice to fly on an airplane? Take one more breath in. And then exhale, hands down to the floor. Looking forward, step back, plank pose. If you want chaturanga, if you want three chaturangas or downward facing dog. Mm -hmm. Chloe just skipped it all together, which is yeah, very she. chic. Okay, and then we have the other side to do. So we're getting the blood going, getting some heat building. Left leg lifts up. Step forward to a lunge. Spin the back foot down 45 degrees. Triangle pose, building from the floor up. Like you're building anything that's structurally sound. We start with the legs the, or the foundation of whatever you're building. Okay, turn your chest. Anchor your left sitting bone back towards your right heel. Rotate the left kneecap forward over the second and third left toes. Turn your neck, turn your gaze. Lengthen through the crown of the head forward. Lean your chest back. Good. Power through the legs. Inhale and stand up. Sit your block. Turn the left toes in, right toes out. Widen your stance if you need to. Bend the right knee deeply. Warrior two. Stretch through those arms. Looking past the right middle finger. Make sure the crown of the head is stacked right over the tailbone. So you're zipped up the middle. Navel pulls in and up, back leg is powerfully straight, pushing into the floor. We've got two more breaths, breathing in and breathing out. Stretch those arms, back arm is just as high. Take one more breath in and exhale out. Straighten your legs, hands to your hips. Turn the toes in, hands to your hips and then lift your chest up. Exhale, fold forward, bow, prasarita, padatanasana, second side. Any arm variation you want to do is cool with us. Chloe's grabbing her ankles. You can put your head on a block again. I like to do this one. If you want to stretch out your shoulders, you can interlace your hands behind your low back. 
a necklace um, situation going on. You know, a few more breaths here. You can also move it on this side. You can bend one knee and then the other knee. That feels good to me. I didn't even realize I was doing this, but it feels nice to open up the inner thighs and bend from side to side. Good. And then take your hands down to the floor. Look forward, lengthen your waist. Pivot yourself to the front of the room. Get your legs really strong. Look forward. Keep your legs strong as you reach the arms up high lunge. Hands to a prayer, twist to the left, hooking the right elbow or right armpit, and then modify as you need. Turning your chest, maybe flying the arms, maybe not. We've got a few more deep breaths here. Back thigh bone stays lifted. Good, rotate, rotate, rotate. One more breath in. Exhale, hands down to the floor. Plank pose, your choice, a few chaturangas, or not. I'm gonna do a few, I need to. Okay, downward facing dog. Hips are high, bend your knees, look forward at your hands, step or jump your feet to the top of the mat, lengthen as you inhale, fold as you exhale. Bend your knees, sit back, chair pose, stand up, arms down, mountain pose. <laughs> Very nice. From here, Sweep the arms up. <laughs> Gaze up to your bum. As you exhale, dive forward into the legs, hands coming down, head releasing heavy. Good. Separate your feet about hips distance apart. So again, you can put your measured two fists between the inner arches of the feet. On an inhale, extend your spine forward, bend into both knees. So you've got a, a good amount of leverage here in getting that spine a little longer. Take your two-piece fingers, wrap them around your big toes for a yogi toe lock. And then with that spine still extended out, lengthen out, look forward on an inhale. As you exhale, box your elbows out to the right and left, bending the elbows to the right and left, I should say. Drop the crown of the head down to the floor and you're in your forward fold, padanustasana. Watch the knees here. So especially if we add any kind of bend into the knees, think of a slight wrapping of the inner knee towards the outer knee. And then from there, lift from the outer knee towards the outer hip like you could Lengthen the leg up a little higher, buttock bones lifting higher towards the ceiling. Soften the top line of your shoulders, so especially that trap zone that for a lot of us is going to automatically want to hike up towards the ears here. See if you can keep those mellow, a little softer in tone. And then maybe even soften the eyes, the jaw, or any kind of expression on the face. Sometimes it creeps up on us in a yoga practice. We don't even realize we're like doing full energetic held expressions. So keep the face more neutral if you can. Let's do one more cycle, breathing in. And exhale, good, release that grip of the toes, open your chest, look forward. We're gonna take this now a little further going into Padahastasana, or hand to foot. So you're gonna slide the hands underneath, fingers pointing back towards the heels, toes trying to tickle right up against the, the base of your wrist. Again, with a bend in the knees, open your chest and look out, take that half lift. As you exhale, elbows wide to the sides, drop your head, and then any amount, you can lift those buttock bones higher. We're gonna let this be more of a therapeutic variation of the shape, so not necessarily just full hamstring work. Instead, a little more weight to the left foot. You're gonna lift your right heel off the floor, have the right big toe ball mound press right into the fleshy mound of your, your thumb on the palm, and then you can let your, your foot kind of wiggle around against that palm from the right to the left side. So there's a great acupressure point right here on the thumb mound that oftentimes is used if you're having like maybe an intense headache. So especially when we're thinking about focus and mind fog and any kind of malady into the mind space, letting yourself use pressure points and the opening up of the rest of the physical space to bring you more clarity into the mind. Trade it out for the second side. If you haven't already, left toes, kind of dig in and get any kind of funkiness on that left palm out of the way, breath is still running through you. And then from there, both feet on the floor, slide your hands out from underneath the feet, open your chest, lengthen the spine, look forward, good, plant your palms down, either hop or step, step your way back through downward facing dog, hips are high. Gorgissimo. Take your right leg, lift it high from back behind you on the inhale. And from here, let your knee bend, let the heel hang to the left seat as you open the hip up to the side so you get a moment of full length for that whole right front line of the body. Square it off, re-extend the leg, reach the heel up and back. Drop the knee forward, lunge your right foot forward in between the hands, and then heel to the right foot two inches to the left side. Yep, you got it. And then slide the left knee forward and outside of the right, coming down for a seated spinal twist. 
Now you have the option to keep the legs deeply folded, but if you find this right butt lifts a ton off the floor when you do it, extend the left leg forward. Yep, yeah, I'm right, right? So legs <laughs> sometimes get me. From there, left toes, if they're extended out, flex them up to the ceiling. Everyone will take the right hand to the floor behind you. Left arm is gonna reach up towards the ceiling. Feel like you grow longer, grow taller from base of seat to crown of head. And then you're gonna wrap the arm around or like Chrissy's showing, take the hook of the left elbow outside of the right knee. Your choice for just whatever feels best with how deep you're twisting. And again, if you're pregnant, we're not gonna do a closed twist in this variation. You're gonna open it out to the other side so you don't have any compression on the belly space. Sit up tall every inhale, maybe twist yourself even further on the exhale. Twists are important for you to play in your range of what feels appropriate for you at this moment. So instead of trying to go into the deepest expression of the shape, listen to your body, notice where the breath travels, notice where it's not traveling and adjust accordingly. Come back through center, open rotation to the left just for a moment, right elbow inside of the right knee, left hand on the floor behind you, turning your chest, turning your gaze even. And then you'll turn back forward. I want you to take this top right leg, swing it around behind you. We'll move into a pigeon pose on the left side. Left knee can pull a little bit wider. Right leg extends long back behind you. If you want to, you've got props. If you have them and you want to use them, you can take a bolster or a blanket underneath the seat. You can lay it out in front of you for something soft for the torso to lay down on. And we'll take it into a fold for a few cycles of breath. And while we start to transition out of maybe the more like energetic, super focused shapes that you know require full mind-body attention in order to stay in for poses that start to give us the space for more release um, and more receptivity, be mindful of just how quick our minds are to go and wander off somewhere else. In the same way that Chrissy said, keeping movement to keep a sense of uh, clarity through physical body is important. The same kind of integration of how we work our minds so that the mind isn't just traveling off anywhere, but rather you're trying to stay very present with where you are in space right here, right now. So you can keep that idea of a syncopated breath traveling through your system where you're following inhale, following exhale, because the breath is going to be one of our surest ways into staying in present moment. You can imagine traveling the breath low into the base of the pelvis or letting it fill up into the back kidney band at the base of the lungs or maybe even seeing just where the breath travels in the, the capacity of the lungs. Are you breathing into the front, into the back, the left, the right sides, the top, the bottom space? All of it can be a form of internal study to keep you wrapped in the work you're doing. From that fold, I want you to take your hands and carefully walk them back up so you start to lift your chest up away from the fold. And then we're gonna keep weight into your left seat. You can move your props off to the side and you're just gonna turn yourself to face towards the right side of your mat. Left knee is folded in, your right leg is extended out to the side. So it's an open variation of your Janusirshasana, um, that sort of wide, folded practice. That's a weird description of it. That's not what it's called at all. I take that back, but we'll keep going. From Cancel. here, yeah, exactly. Cancel that one. And from here, you have the option of taking the right elbow down to the floor inside of that right leg. Maybe you grab for your block, have a little bit of height underneath for the elbow to rest onto something. Left arm, we're going to have it reach up and then over on the long angle, reaching towards the direction of that right foot. Some might find holding the foot is easy. Others, we're going to keep the arm just reaching long. And if you want to, if your neck needs a little more support here, bend the elbow, grab the back of your head or the base of your neck, and just let that turn um, and support the underside of the neck and the skull here. I'm going to give a little more weight onto Chrissy's outer left thigh and down through her left seat. So even though you probably don't have a personal yoga instructor at home with you while doing this class, um, you're going to imagine having some extra weight or even just your mind, your intention of grounding through your left sitting bone heavy onto the floor so that as you reach to that left side of the waist, there's that feeling of pulling in two directions at the same time. So you get a little more space created. Let's take one more cycle, breathing in and exhale. 
Good, rise up towards the seat. Let's take just an easy uh, counter back bend to this. You're gonna let the left hand find the floor behind you. Press into your left shin, the right foot. Scoop your pelvis up, and then very carefully, you'll reach the right arm up and over the ear, letting the front of the pelvis open up, letting the chest turn a little more to the ceiling, taking a nice big breath in. As you exhale, slowly hips return back down to the floor and then readjust hands to the top of your mat, readjust your feet back, just come to a plank position so you find that top of a push-up shape, adjust yourself, come back more towards neutral setting. And then hands and feet stay where they are, hips will lift up and back to your downward facing dog. Good, left leg lifts up and back behind you, knee will bend, heel hangs to the seat as you let your hip open up to the side. And then from here, extending the leg, pull the knee forward, lunge the left foot in between the hands. Heel toe the foot towards the right, take the right knee slide outside of the left ankle, coming down towards your seat. Again, it's your option with how you're gonna sit here with the leg folded or let that right leg extend all the way long out in front of you. Left hand behind you, right arm reaches to the ceiling first, you get some extension, some length. And then you're gonna take the wrap, either arm around the front of the knee and shin or take the elbow outside as you start to turn on that left spiral. Every inhale, you give yourself something to do. You lift up, you lengthen. Every exhale, you see how much more you can spiral around towards the left. Let's do one more cycle here, breathing in. And exhale. Back through center, open rotation towards the right side, left hand inside of the right, inside of the left knee, I should say, right hand to the floor behind you. And then back through center, left leg swings around and back behind you, right knee folds in, you'll come into your pigeon pose. And while I didn't say this on the first side, which is entirely my bad, if pigeon pose doesn't feel good on your knees, feel free to do another variation, maybe a figure four on the back, ankle to knee, cross-legged forward fold, something that keeps you rooted in the hips, but something that also feels safe in your body. Again, torso can release forward into your fold when you've got your legs set up, and then you'll take a few cycles of breath just to be. And especially nowadays with so much going on in our world and our attention rightfully so being drawn in so many directions, it's easy to get super overwhelmed and to maybe want to shut off or distance yourself. So instead of keeping, keeping yourself relatively simple here, giving yourself one task to look for, to look to, to work with, so that it's less overwhelming for the system and there's more of a clear direction for where you're going and what you're looking to get done. Take one more cycle here in your full breathing in. And exhale. Walking hands back, chest lifts up, and from here we're again gonna transition into that wide folded variation of your leg. So now it's the right knee folded, your left leg is extended out. You can flex the left toes to the ceiling. A little bend in the left knee is always encouraged by us. No need to go stick straight with the legs. Left hand down inside of the leg. Maybe you drop the elbow to the floor. Maybe you add some prop work to give you some support. And then the right arm's gonna reach up and over on the long angle. Grab for the foot, grab for the back of your head, your choice. Take a moment to really lengthen through that whole right side line. Energetically, you're gonna pin the right seat down to the floor like you could anchor yourself steady through the base and then that might just give you, even if it's just in the imagination, you might have more liberty of exploration along that whole right side line. Like you could open up space between each individual rib. Like the breath might be able to travel and gain more volume in the space of your lungs. Let's have one more cycle breathing in. And exhale. Coming back up towards the seat, right hand to the floor behind you. You'll put the weight in the right knee, the left foot, lift the pelvis up, take that left arm up and back, gently opening up once again through the front line of the body. We'll do one more cycle of breathing. As you exhale, seat comes down to the floor, and instead of coming back to down dog, let's just swing both feet around in front of us so you're on your seat with the legs out in front of you. We're gonna take a variation um, 
Tarasana. So it's it's similar to Baddha Konasana, that diamond shape we take with the legs, but instead of the heels being pulled in really close towards your seat, you're going to make yourself into a wider diamond shape, so the feet pull forward about two, two and a half feet. You can kind of decide how far. Is that two and a half feet? My measurement. We don't know. Clear. I'm, I've Under. never been good with eyeing, eyeballing measurements. So, anyway. Your feet are out in front of you. It's gonna be a fold. It's gonna be a rounded fold as opposed to that extended long spine fold that we often will encourage you to do. And so for that, we will ask if you have any props to have something for your forehead to rest onto. So that might be a block. It might be a block between the feet with a second block on top. You decide how much height you need and then you'll start to round the spine. I like to hook my elbows in front of the shins. It's kind of a way for me to stay hooked into the shape and then my forehead rests down onto something. Eyes can be closed here, so you don't have to worry about what you're seeing, any kind of visual reference outside. Instead, focus once again, loops onto the breath, traveling through you. And with the head resting heavy on something, you can maybe soften the sides of the neck. A softening through the jaw, even through the, the skin on the scalp of your head. two more low sweeping breaths so let yourself fill up as if the breath could touch down into the very base of the seat even down through the legs to the feet and really slowly with the heaviness in the tail rolling up through the spine your head will be the last thing to lift. And as the head finds its way on top of the rest of the spine, you'll move any prop work off to the side. We're going to do just a, a gentle open twist. So take the left knee over towards the right side. You'll stagger your knees, stagger even your feet. Um, so it's like a little, I don't know, I describe this as like the feeling of what a mermaid might feel like, but I don't know what that even means. Left hand to the right knee, right hand to the floor behind you, turn your chest. And then coming back to face forward, just simple butterfly knees over towards the left side, same sort of cross staggered knees, foot hook, and then right hand to the left knee and you'll turn You're facing forward. You'll grab for that couch cushion if you have it. If you don't have a couch cushion, maybe it's a blanket, or if anything, you can always just lie long on your mat without anything underneath you. If you've got a pillow of some kind, your butt's on the floor, right behind the pillow, or right in front of the pillow, I should say, and then you're gonna come to recline all the way down. If you have yoga props and you want to do knees butterfly open, soles of feet together, Baddha Konasana with the legs now, with something supporting under the outer thighs so it's not going to be an overstretch for the inner groin through to the hips. That's just the most ideal situation. If you don't have props to put underneath the legs, you can always cross your ankles like I have or let the legs just extend out long, similar to Shavasana. And we're going to finish practice with a final breathing technique. It's called a Veloma breath. Um, and this breath pattern is for today. There's different variations you can play, but we're going to do a three part inhale, one long exhale to start, and then we're going to switch it and do one inhale and a three part exhale. Hands can be off to the side, palms facing up, or arms resting with the hands on the body, belly, chest, pelvis, wherever feels good. Taking a regular breath in, 
And as you exhale, press all the air out, maybe a little more efforted, pull the navel center back and into the spine so you have a moment of just complete empty. And then take an inhale into the lowest part of the belly and pause. Take another inhale into the middle part of the lung space and pause. Take a third inhale into the very top of the chest and you pause, hold for a moment at the top. And then easy exhale, release the air out. Easy recovery breath, normal inhale. And normal exhale. One more like this, breathing in. As you exhale, come to complete empty. Navel center pulling in towards the spine. And then again, inhale into the belly and pause. Inhale into the middle space of the lungs and pause. Inhale into the very top of your chest and you wait. Stay for a little longer this time with that suspension of breath in the lungs. And then easy exhale, release it out. Again, just a regular breath on your own. And we'll have one more of this variation, so having your moment to exhale all the air out and then I'll let you take it in your own rhythm. Three inhales, a moment of hold, one long exhale and then you return to your normal breath rhythm. back to your normal breath pattern. We're going to switch up the rhythm so it's a longer inhale and then three parts for your exhale. So we'll all take a moment to get on the same page. Regular breath in and exhale all the air out. And then again, full breath in this time. Fill yourself up. Exhale just a third of breath and pause. Exhale another third of breath and pause. Exhale the last third of breath and you'll wait for a moment at empty. And then a recovery breath, regular inhale. Regular exhale. One more of those regular inhale. Exhale all the air out. And then a full breath in, a third of breath out and pause, a third of breath out and pause, a final third of breath out so you're completely empty and just take a moment before you re-invite the breath in. And you'll have one more round on your own. Take as many normal breaths as you need to before taking that final big inhale and then three part exhale and then back to your regular rhythm. And as you finish that practice, if you want to keep the soles of feet together, knees butterfly open, you can if you want to have a moment for the legs to extend all the way long. We'll have a, about a minute to just lie long and be quiet and have a moment to soak up the effects of the practice. So adjust Shavasana however you need it and want it for today. Small movements, fingers, toes, let the head rock easy side to side. Bending your knees, feet on the floor, and then just 
gently roll to its side and come all the way up towards the seat. And we'll take a comfortable seat. We're going to be here for just a moment for a, a short seated meditation. Hands resting on the lap, wherever it's comfortable, palms down, palms up. Eyes can either settle all the way to close or let the focus just drop towards the ground if that's more comfortable for today. Finding that sense of balance between base of seat to crown of head, that simple stack of your bones. And again, we'll use our breath as our to finding present moment. Watching your inhale as it pulls in through the nose. Notice the temperature of the breath as it runs along the inner nostril, down into the throat, filling up into the lungs. And the exhale, the temperature of the breath as it leaves against the lungs, the throat, the outer nostril line, the warmer quality for the air as it leaves. And if the mind starts to wander off, no problem when you catch it. Moving to a new thought. Notice where you are in your breath cycle. Follow the rest of that cycle. Find yourself moving into a new cycle of breath. Inhale, exhale, right back into inhale, right back into exhale. sounds around you or maybe even just the sounds from our video maybe it's happening from the street outside or from another room in your home taking just a, a real moment to sit with everything that is going on, both on the inner landscapes and the outer landscapes. Take your hands, bring them right in front of the center of the chest, and I want you to vigorously rub your palms together. You'll get a little bit of heat going in between the palms of the hands. Go for just a little bit longer so the hands are really hot. And then you're going to take the palms and cover up the eyes. Heel of hand right at the base of the eye socket, hands laid over, fingers reaching up towards your forehead. And you don't necessarily have to press the hands heavy into the eyes, but rather let yourself just have a mask of darkness for a second. And then 
make more of a cup shape so there's space between the palms and the face but still a darker shadow over the eyes and you can just blink the eyes gently open with the hands still covering. From there, the hands can start to release down, the eyes can stay open, and we're going to let you go back into your day. Thank you so much for practicing with us. Thank you again to the new co for continued support, and um, that's our last one for gearing this series, yeah, towards different things that both crashes and supplemental support can help with. Um, this class will be on Sky King TV after today, so if you want to practice it anytime, it'll be available for you there. Um, again, if you have the means to donate, we're accepting donations through our website for, for the world to support Black trans lives during this incredibly difficult time where we're all fighting to make shifts and changes and get things moving in a more positive direction for all. So we appreciate your support. We appreciate you showing up um, and we will see you soon.